to elaborate on what the next two years will be for her serving as the Uganda Law Society president, we are joined by Fiona Nalasa, well, the president of the Uganda Law Society. Good evening and welcome to NTV tonight. Good evening. I think Fiona can now see it in person. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. The remarks have been amazing on social media. So we'll just oh. start from <laughs> what this win, you mentioned that this win is for the future generation, in particular the female gender. Let's start from there. Because, well, one of the things we need to realize is that um, the law society is supposed to be a leader. It's supposed to provide leadership. It's supposed to lead the way when it comes to issues incidental to the law and to constitutionalism. And for a long time, we've been preaching affirmative action. I keep saying that we are, we are a country of contradictions. We are the same country that had girls being defiled in lockdown. We are the same country where even in cases of defilement, you have policemen asking the parents to negotiate and not viewing it like a crime. And yet we are also the same country that has produced the first deputy female uh, dep uh, vice president of the country, the first uh, female speaker. So we are a country of contradictions, but it's very, very, it's so, it's, it's time that our words matched our will as a country. The aspirations of the people of Uganda, we have the best constitution when it comes to affirmative action, but we have to put it into, into we have to breathe life into that constitution. And I believe the Uganda Law Society by electing these women today, uh, oh, sorry, some days ago, um, are on that journey now. Well, speaking of that journey as the Uganda Law Society, Alia, you mentioned that you intend to regain the lost glory of the Uganda Law Society. For many lawyers, they say the, the peak was 2005, but 15 mm. years ago mm. was the highest moment of history for the Uganda Law Society. How yes. do you intend on doing this? First of all, I think one of the things that has happened is that people have divided us. Our work has divided us. We need to come together. Our work is very integral to the development of this country in all aspects, not just the rule of law. We are supposed to be advisors on government. Uh, we are corporation secretaries and we run very key uh, operational areas within the key institutions in this country. But we are not working together. We're not working with a strategy as members of the law society. We have to come together. We're starting a new strategic plan starting next year. And that is what I want to base this on. We, want, we need to ensure that we are faithful to our mandate. To, to that every lawyer, wherever they are, remembers that rule of law is a priority. Because if we, and if we tolerate uh, any injustices anywhere, it will threaten justice anywhere. And the second thing we need to look at and, and remember as members is that we have a duty to increase access to justice, to speak for those that do not have a voice. That is why I'm proud to say that despite having 2,000 lawyers as in, in, in the pro bono and legal aid project, we have we are now going to ensure that lawyers, the defenders of defenders, are going to be the ones um, benefiting first from those services to ensure that we strengthen our lawyers when they are doing the right thing of defending those that are defenseless. We have the issues of professional development. would like to also increase our value proposition to the membership. If we increase our value to the membership, the membership will prioritize us. Mm. So those are, the, are going to be the tenets of, our president, of my presidency. Okay. Going to the conversation when it, you talk about government, working yes. with government, um, some believe that the society should ditch the cowardice, they call it just being cowardly mm. behavior, and take on government through what they call that strategic litigation. Yes. How strategic will we be as we get also into the 2021 election as well? <laughs> um, I think we have already been strategic. At the beginning of this year, we took... Uh, uh, the parliament to court uh, over the Judiciary Administration Bill and we were successful and because of that now that has been passed. Um, right now we, we don't have public smoking uh, allowed because of public interest litigation that was done by uh, those that came before us. So this is a, a real tool that, that all the arms of government respect so it's high time we used it. We are the lawyers. Yes. So it's just time to take our place, to organize, strategize, and ensure that we use this strategic litigation to get the things on the table that they've refused to put on the table. Well, thank you so much, Fiona, for joining us on NTV tonight. We wish you all the best in these next two years. I believe we'll be having more of these conversations. Thank you very much. Well,
Now, that was the president of the Uganda Law Society, Fiona Navasa Wall. For now, let's move on to politics. There are growing concerns by opposition political parties under the Inter Party Organization for Dialogue that the 2021 polls might be marred by violence carried forward from the recently concluded chaotic NRM parliamentary primaries. IPOD believes there's the need for more civic education to the masses to prevent violence in the forthcoming polls. <laughs> The ruling party's primary elections have been chaotic. In most areas, both voting and tallying were contested with brute force and violence. Inter-party organization for dialogue iPod, where NRM belongs, is now condemning the violence. As leaders of 